Home Assistant 2025.11 is landing today, the penultimate release of this year. And this month, there is even more dashboard improvements, some really nice pie, progress bars, and more clarity on picking targets. First up though, we have even more UI redesign happening over in the automation editor. For the last couple of releases, we've seen nice improvements to the layout of the automation editor. First, they introduced the sidebar, which was kind of a big change to the automation editor, as well as some other visual cues to make editing automations more easy. Then in the last release, they refined those changes that they made earlier based on your feedback. This month adds some, I personally think, really nice changes. The first one is if you go over to an automation and you add a trigger, a condition, or an action, there is a whole new pop-up to find and select the thing that you are looking for. And for me, this is so much easier and quicker to find items in the list than it previously was. When you click on something like a light, it's gonna bring up in the right-hand pane of the pop-up all of the actions that are associated with lights, and then when you select one, it will jump over into the sidebar. I've looked at the old design and the new side-by-side -side for way more time than I'd like to admit, and I can't figure out why it feels so much faster for me to find the item I'm looking for, but it just does <laughs> for some reason. I would actually love to hear if you feel the same about this or if you thought the old one was faster or better down in the comments below. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why, it, it just is. This new design also does kind of get rid of the add action and the add building blocks button, which I wasn't a massive fan of personally. Though if you do add an action, the building blocks is still a tab up at the top here, which is still a bit of an improvement, though it's still personally for me, I would get rid of the building blocks and have them all under actions, if it were me, since it does kind of require you to have knowledge of which one the thing you're looking for is categorized in if you don't search. But overall, a big fan of this new redesign. The other change in the automation editor here is once you have selected something like an action, there is a new target picker, which aims to improve the visibility of exactly which device you are looking at. When you click on add target, it will bring up a list of all the entities, devices, areas, and labels along with search, and you can quickly filter on any category that you like. If you pick something like an area or a device, you can then further dig in and see which exact entities will be targeted during the action by showing you which device or area those entities belong to so that it's easier to see exactly what is gonna happen when your automation runs. In previous releases, you would just have to trust that the area or device that you were target targeting did include the thing that you actually wanted it to, so this is a nice addition. All right, next up is a nice little improvement that helps you with naming devices more consistently on your dashboard. If you now add a device to your dashboard using the tile card, you will see that under name, there is quick controls for changing the way the name is displayed on your dashboard. You can either add entity, device, area, or floor, or even all of the above. For example, if you have a light that's entity name is bedroom ceiling light, but I only have one light in that room, I can then just click add area to add bedroom to the name, and that's it. Now, at first I was like, wow, this is a big downgrade as there is no way to add a custom name. And then I realized if you just start typing the name that you want into the box, you can just hit custom and you are still able to do that, which is great. Next up, another UI improvement is the energy dashboard now supports a pie chart alongside of the bar graph. If you are tracking energy, you can head over to the energy dashboard and then under the individual device total usage, you can click on the little pie chart icon in the top right, which will do this sweet, sweet animation into a pie chart for those of you who love pies. Finally, for the UI stuff, we have improvements to the new home dashboard that was introduced a few releases back. The first little improvement is that anywhere areas are used in the new home dashboard, they will now be grouped by floors if you have floors set up and areas assigned to those floors. So it will show you areas by ground floor, first floor, 
basement, things like that inside of your dashboard. Second change is that the summaries view for lights, climate, security and media players are now available as separate views inside of settings and then dashboards so that you can access them directly from that menu. And finally, suggested entities and favorite entities that you assign in your dashboard settings are now combined into a single section so that you can quickly access whatever you need at the right time. Finally, for the big stuff, if you go to install an update for Home Assistant or for an add-on, in previous releases, it would just show you that it was installing or updating, but no real way to see what stage it was at. But now as of this release, you will now see a progress bar of how far through the update the update has completed. So you can get an idea of when it might be finished. Nice. As for little things this month, firstly, Eleven Labs has been added as a speech to text integration if you would like to use that for a voice inside of Home Assistant. You can now group valves together with a helper. The new SwitchBot garage door opener is supported inside of the SwitchBot integration. And finally, climate devices are now supported inside of the Control 4 integration. In terms of new integrations this month, a very nice nine integrations added in this release and quite a nice mix this month, I would say. The open RGB one is cool for PC integration, as is the Thing one, which could be useful for like network stats. So good to see all of those added in this month. And we also get one integration moved over from YAML into the UI too. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, this was initially a much longer list uh, when the release notes first came out and then it shrunk down by quite a bit. So as of now, it's reasonably small and it's mostly minor things. The one I would draw your attention to is the mobile app, which just has very minor changes to the way that zones are sent and may just require a little bit of adjustment inside of your automations. But other than that, all fairly minor, but do make sure to have a read for yourself, as always, before updating. And that's about it for this release. Lots of UI changes in this month to enjoy, which are always welcome. Definitely a lot of work being put into the automation editor over the last few months, which is really nice to see. There's a couple of new integrations in there in this month that I'm actually interested in looking at more closely too, which you are gonna see soon. Do let me know your favorite new feature from this release down in the comments though, as always. Can't believe there was only one more release of this year to go, which means only one more thumbnail. Absolutely wild scenes going on over here. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed. And I will see you in the next video.